Let's paint pumpkins today. Today I have sketched out my drawing using the Peel Off China Marker by Sharpie. It works real good. And using my Viviva watercolor set. And I've mixed up some yellows and oranges to give me a light base color to start with and I'm going to put my yellow in on the highlight side and up at the top to start us off as a very faint layer. I've used a lot of water uh, in the shells to lighten the watercolor and I have sped this up to two times so it wouldn't be a long video for you um, just spreading out the yellow, adding some light oranges on my dark side. It's pretty wet right now. There's a lot of water. This is a 5 by 7 piece of watercolor uh, paper, uh, 140 pound. And I'm just spreading the watercolor out and then I'm going to take my orange and put some darker orange along the left side of the pumpkins. And now I'm going to take off the excess water and I have a clean damp brush and I can use it to wipe off what I want to get rid of and I can also turn it upside down which I'll do here in a moment to let the water flow the opposite direction and then I'm going to let it dry. I use a heat gun to do my drawing in between. I'm going to use a paper towel to blot off some of the excess orange on the bottom and now that it's dry we can move on to the next step I'm going to use some of the Viviva Sap Green to do my little tendals here. I've over-exaggerated them, but I did that on purpose. Uh, this is not a realistic pumpkin uh, patch. It is um, exaggerated just for fun and something different. I'm painting the stems with green on the left side using sap green as well. Using a little bit of lime green to lighten some of that up. And then I'm going to take some clean water in my brush and just go over this and meld it all together to where I have a background with a lighter value on my tendrils. So just push the paint out, use clean damp brush to get rid of any hard edges. You don't want any hard edges here. Then I'm taking a darker orange and putting it on the left side of the pumpkins to give me the second uh, layer. Then I'm going to take a clean damp brush again and lift out some colors on the right hand side to give me some highlights from where the sun is shining down on them on the right hand side. And then you want to take a clean damp brush and on the edges of between the dark and the light you want to use that to soften the edges so you don't have any hard edges and then dry your paper again or let it dry naturally. I'm using a heat gun.
Here I'm taking the dark orange again, just trying to darken it one more time, again blending everything out. doesn't matter which brush you use. I'm using a mop brush and later on I'll be using a size 8 and I think a size 2. But if you have any questions on the uh, products that I'm using, just leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Again, I am using the Viviva watercolors and I do have a 10% off if you like this brand. You're welcome to use it. It's in the description below to get 10% off your next order, which is always a good thing. But anything else that you see that I'm using, just let me know and I'll be happy to answer it. Right now I'm just blending, getting some darker tones in the bottom and on the left hand side with some lighter tones on the right hand side. I'm now taking some salt and putting it on the wet uh, pumpkins to give me some texture and I'm going to let this dry um, and use my heat tool at the end and brush the salt off. I'm also spritzing it to give me some texture so it kind of gives us the uneven uh, texture of a pumpkin. I've got my size 2 and I'm using the dark green on the left hand side of the stems to darken them up and it's uh, bleeding into the pumpkin which is fine it gives us that it sets the stem into the pumpkin going over the tendrils again everything's done in layers so you always want to let one dry before you move on to the next. I like the heat gun because I can do it pretty quickly. This Viviva palette has 16 colors. You have your reds, your uh, blues, yellows, greens, violets. It even has a white. Um, so it's pretty um, easy to use it all in one go. Uh, it's great for outdoor plein air paintings. Um, today I'm in the studio so we're doing it in here. So I'm just working on the greens to kind of get some variations. So you'll see me paint greens and browns in the stems and then I'll lift them out to give it a highlight. It's a back and forth thing. Um, you don't want it all one color you want to work with it in layers and you can add more and lift it out. I have gone back to my mop brush and I'm wetting the leaves that I've drawn in and I'm putting yellow in as the lightest color and then I'm going to take the uh, alizarin, alizarin crimson that they have and put it in for a fall-like leaf. And this will blend out and that's fine because we're going to use this color um, to do some background so I'm not worried about it. And then I'm going to do some darker versions on the outer edges of the leaves to do some negative painting to give some uh, descriptive idea of the leaf itself. So I'm not really worried about it. You can get up a little bit with a clean damp brush if it gets out of hand because like here it's bleeding uh, towards the end. 
So I'm taking a brown and putting it in with the red uh, to give us kind of some autumn type colors. And I'm lifting a little bit of that out to just lighten it up some to go to the next step. So now I'm taking the red and I'm doing some negative painting um, on these leaves. On the outline of them. To give it a, give it a little bit of definition. I'm just going to blend that out and create a background with that red, uh, deep burgundy red. I'm taking the violet and I'm going to go underneath the pumpkins and outline the actual leaves and give them definition to blend that out again for a deeper background uh, negative painting the leaves to where they stand out. Just make sure you have clean water, a damp brush, We don't want any hard edges, so just make sure you smooth everything out. I don't have my paper taped down. Uh, you can. This is a 5x7, so it's not very large. It did buckle, and I worked with it when I dried it, and it was fine. Um, but you could always tape it down. You could work on a bigger piece of paper. Um, either way is fine. So here I'm using a blue, uh, actually a green, to uh, go over on the side and do some negative painting and blend out that green. Don't be afraid to turn your paper around the way that you're working. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm very carefully going around and blending everything out. And it did show some definition on your edges, your soft edges, and your hard edges. So now I'm going to work at the top of the painting. I used a blue here, and if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't. The blue did not blend as great as I would have liked it to, uh, but it worked out okay but it was a little bit darker than I really wanted and I couldn't get it um, very light so it kind of looks a little bit overworked at the end but all in all I'm happy with it. I needed the dark somewhere and it ended up being in that corner. So I'm taking the orange on the right hand side of the last pumpkin and highlighting it to make it pop and blending that in with the blue. I want to keep some light, so I'm trying to keep them on the inside of the pumpkins. And just keep working around. I've got the violet again, working around the leaves. Then I'm going to blend it out and push it out with clean, damp uh, brush with clean water and spread it out around the tendrils and just blend it in with everything that is near it. Now you could you leave more white space in here. I opted to 
do a complete background but you it works just as well if you leave a white paper on the background here I'm trying to blend that blue again again I I wasn't real happy with it and I even tried to wet it to see if it would help and I'm going to do some of the dark orange around this side to match the other side just to bring that color um, blended and merging out to the other side to make those pop out We got the middle one here. It's still light. If you'll see in the top right corner in this uh, area I'm working in now, it stays light so it works well. So now I want to um, use the burnt umber to do the crevices and the pumpkins. And I Put the burnt umber on, wet my brush, clean, water, damp, and I blend it out. So you'll see me several times through this video. I take it away, put it on, take it away, and at the end it actually turned out very nice. You don't want a brown line down your pumpkin. So you put it on and then you blend it out, get your darks and your lights, you get your crevices in there and then you put some more orange to blend everything together and depending on how wet your paper is you may need to let this dry before moving on to the next step so here I'm taking the orange like I said I've blended it now I'm putting another layer of orange on here to give me my good color variations and my crevices in my pumpkin with the darks and the lights. Just work at it until it's like you want it to be. So now I'm taking clean water in my big mop brush and I'm actually starting at the top and moving down and wiping, lifting and wiping color from the pumpkins to bring my highlights back in because they had gotten dark with what I was doing. I'm taking my yellow and I'm adding some more yellow to the top part and wetting it and blending it in to give it a little bit more. I'm still working with this blue. I wasn't happy with it, but I'm still trying to get some uh, light and highlights in there. Make sure you don't have any hard edges. Taking the violet again, I'm going to use this to put some veins in the leaves and I take a clean damp brush on some of them and blend it in. You want to keep some light and darks. I've kept some highlights there. Now I'm taking some rust color and I'm actually putting it in the stems of the pumpkins to give me more of a brownish greenish tint to them and at the end here I end up putting them into the tendrils to kind of give it a brownish green type 
feel. I don't think they should be completely green or completely brown. I'm going back into the crevices of the pumpkin one last time to give some definition to some of the creases with some shadows of the orange and the rust in the pumpkins. And then I'll blend it out again one last time. Tidying up the stems here. And there we go. There's our painting. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.